So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you remember uh, in the two or three uh, introductory chapter uh, lecture, I tried to uh, clarify somehow the background of uh, evolution of the economic system. The basic question was that how became uh, Europe the leading uh, force of uh, formation of the economic system? Uh, I hope you remember the rank list uh, before the evolution of the economic system. The most developed civilization was China, and the second one, India, uh, the third one, uh, Muslim world, and Europe, Central and Western Europe, only the fourth one. How we came uh, to be a leading power of formation of the economic system? Uh, we try to define the, how changed the uh, concept of Europe, uh, how uh, introduced a new uh, agriculture in consequence of the uh, changing regional background of Europe, because in the Greek and the Roman Empire uh, and the Roman civilization focused to the area of Mediterranean basin. But in consequence of uh, political and military and, and, uh, and the general change pushed northward a European civilization and became a continental power to a new area necessary to invent a new agriculture. And the key innovation of agriculture, almost this was the last slide on the last week, uh, a heavy plow, heavy plow or wheel plow, uh, because for a very heavy uh, brown forest soil necessary uh, construct a steady, steady, sorry, steady construction of the plow. Why? Because in the Mediterranean Sea, on the area of light soil, was enough using a scratching plow. But in the continental area, for uh, more uh, uh, stack. Uh, formation of the of the soil area necessarily introduce some more heavy construction. Uh, sorry. Okay. Switch on. Uh, okay, we are over. But very interesting question: on which area invented the heavy plow? Uh, uh, archaeological reconstruction verified a lot of regional invention appear in the British Isle, uh, for example, in Slavic area, in uh, eastern part of steppe area on the Khazar Empire. But uh, the first two area of invention of heavy plow was a Slavic homeland. Uh, a Slavic name came from the slow marshland name and the uh, uh, traditional homeland of Slavic people located uh, between the Carpathian Basin, northern fringe of Carpathian Basin and the Baltic Sea, the southern coastline of Baltic Sea. This is the traditional uh, Slavic homeland area. And the great migration of Slavic people and uh, Slavic folks started on the uh, 5th century, Anno Domini, of course. And the Western uh, Slavic people moved westward, a Polish and the Czech and Moravians. The Southern Slavic people moved southward on into the direction of Balkanic Peninsula, uh, Serbian, Croatian, uh, Bulgarian, and the Eastern Sl Slavic people, mainly the Russian, moved eastward. This is the great age of Slavic migration. And uh, but our question, how distributed in Western Europe are uh, innovation of uh, heavy plow, innovated partly by Slavic peasants. Because this is a forest area, uh, typical uh, forest, the typical soil is the forest brown uh, soil, and invented the heavy plow. Uh, on, the, on, the, on this period, uh, early German and Teutonic kingdom founded a uh, quite a similar political construction which remembered from the Roman Empire. But Roman Empire on the heyday period based to the works of slaves. Everybody know which is the slave, no free people. Okay, but necessary called a slave for the uh, Roman-like construction. 
But majority of these German and Teutonic people is a Christian. Therefore, Christian people, it's not possible to take a slave. Therefore, necessary to find a Paganic people. And all the time, the Slavic people lived in the different form of the shamanism. The, it's criteria uh, ideal for the, uh, for the uh, Christian uh, German kingdoms and organized military campaign for hunting slaves and exporting slaves to Western Europe. Majority of slaves function like a colonus, it's a Latin word, it's a peasant slave. Not by chance, somebody know which is the term of slave in uh, uh, French? Nobody? Esclave. Esclave came from the slave. Like, for example, uh, Hungarian students know that uh, it's a free market, it's a, uh, it's a spontaneously organized market in Hungary named a Chinese market. A Chinese market. Everything possible to buy. And very interesting and ridiculous, for example, in, in Seged, the largest Chinese, Chinese market organized on the Cherepesho. I visited, I, I'm living quite close to the, uh, this uh, uh, area, and I visited regularly on the Chinese market, but no Chinese. Asian people from Vietnam, uh, from Laos, any other countries except no people from China. It's exaggeration, it's not ex simplification. If somebody Asian, who are the highest population in Asia? China. Therefore, it's used as a simplification and the frame category. A little bit same which happened in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the term of slave, very close to the Slavic, and esclave in the French uh, grammatical system to slave. Okay, this is one. A Slavic people introduced and distributed in the different uh, uh, branches of the, of the slaves' trade in Western Europe, the knowledge of new agriculture. Other innovation area is a Khazar Empire. A Khazar Empire is a Turkish Empire. For example, Hungarian tribes on the time of migration from uh, Ural Mountain to Carpathian Basin lived it's longer or shorter this, uh, discussed in the archaeology and the Hungarian history, but some decades surely lived in the Khazar Empire and picked a lot of knowledges. Uh, for example, uh, it's a, basically the Khazar people, the Khazar folk, a Turkish, a Turkish Empire. Uh, but somebody know which was the religion of the Khazar Empire? Judaism, Judaism, exceptional, exceptional. It's a Judaism, a Judaism. And not by chance, in the Hungarian list of the king, there are three names from the Old Testament. Exceptional, because in the contemporary history, medieval history, the king's name from the Old Testament, not popular. Samuel uh, and uh, and uh, uh, David, and I don't know who are the third one. Uh, David was only the prince, but it's a classical Old Testament uh, uh, king. Uh, okay, this is one. And other one, the term of garden, it's Hungarian, it's a cat, came from the uh, uh, one people, one folk lived in the frame of uh, uh, Turkish, Turkish folk lived in the frame of Khazar Empire, his name Alans, Alans. It's a Turkish population. Therefore, learn a lot of Hungarians in the frame and first time met a classical plow-based plant farming and agriculture. And why interesting for us? Because if we are discuss about the, who are the Jews, this is a religion, or we can describe according to terms of ethnicity. And very interesting, when reconstructed a DNA, a DNA, the, the, the line of uh, uh, the antecedents in the European Jews community, very high the proportion 
of the Turkish, Turkish ancestors. Therefore, if we are discussed about the problem, it's religion or ethnic, ethnicity, described community, much more religion. Because the program, the religious program moved one community to other. Okay, but when the uh, Khazar Empire collapsed, the immigrants escaped westward to Europe. Therefore, large part of Jews and Jewish population in Europe, according to ethical background, Turkish. Very surprising. Okay, but turn back because for us, because this is a uh, agrarian or, or uh, economic history course, we are not focused to the uh, to the special history of ethical uh, groups. Okay, Khazar Empire. Okay, first innovation of uh, agrarian evolution: the heavy plow, invented a lot of different time, but the most successful construction on the frame of Khazar Empire and on the Slavic area. The second innovation are two or three field system. Two or three field system. Uh, two and three field system uh, reason uh, that the wheat, you know the wheat, this is a cereal, exhaust the soil. Therefore, two following year, not possible, uh, it's uh, uh, sowing on the same place a wheat necessary to let as fellow grazing land for recovery the fertility of the soil. Two and three field system. This is the description of the two and three field system. Two, three, uh, two field system means half of the potential arable land not in use. Uh, the, most in, uh, the most developed version only one third of uh, potential arable land is a fellow. Because winter crop, summer crop, fellow, fellow, you know, this is the system of rotation. Anyway, when the second agrarian revolution in the 19th century, the modern agrarian revolution introduced, for example, with fertilizers and the rotation system and so and so, spontaneously doubled the arable land. Because this old traditional system not able to uh, cultivate all of the potential regular land. But it's a great step from two to three uh, field system. And the last one, a new form of horse harnessing system. Why so important? Because in the early period for plowing used a cows and the cattle. And the size of cows and the cattle is much shorter. Therefore, the draw capacity is limited. The horse is a stronger and uh, faster, quicker, compared with the cattle. But there is a weakness of uh, introducing of uh, horses for agrarian uh, activity and the plant farming. Because the well-trained horse ate the same like the human. Not the bread and the sausages, because it's a vegetarian, the majority of the horses. But uh, uh, on my villages uh, was, was a rivalry, because the horses, some horses, like the beer. And for example, uh, it was a, a competition, which horse is able to drink more. And the winner, uh, 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 winner, it was a very drunk, but uh, walking on the on the four flags much easier uh, compensate the uh, the, uh, the side effect of the of the drunkness. Uh, I remember it's a huge quantity, three or or not couple. It's a little bit uh, larger, which is the uh, between the barrel and the cup. How the name? Okay, I will see. You know this size. Ball gallon, okay. Ba ballon? Yeah. Gallon, okay. A gallon. It's a 10 liters, 10 liters uh, of beer, was in the gallon, and uh, uh, the, the winner uh, drank uh, its uh, free, free gallon. It's unbelievable. It's almost 30 liters. Okay, I turn back to the story. Ate the same. Ate the same mean 
cereals. Cereals. Therefore, it's very dangerous gamble because increase the activity of the horses, increase the uh, carrying capacity and the productivity, but large part of cereals ate by horses. Okay, but look at the first innovation. A neck harnessing. Why so, they, why so important? Because if we are looking at this picture made on the Oktoberfest, somebody know which is the Oktoberfest? It's a beer fest in Munich. I spent half a year in Munich. It's unbelievable uh, and very interesting because majority, almost, almost half of the, of the uh, participant of Oktoberfest, the beer fest, uh, came from Asia. And uh, it's very dangerous because the Asian people, majority of Asian people, uh, I don't want to generalize, but uh, not so efficiently able to uh, uh, elaborate the stomach, the alcohol content of beer. Therefore, uh, it was a typical picture on, uh, uh, for example, Metro of Munich, uh, a lot of Japanese and Chinese people on Bavarian clothes, it's looking the wall and not able to move and relax. Because it's very moderate quantity of alcohol enough for the uh, very deep uh, thumb uh, for, the, for the Asian people, it's a, it's a dangerous. But uh, I worked together with one Japanese historian who drank a very small uh, short drinks and uh, one cup of beer and walked in front of the wall. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, turn back to the story. Horse neck. Why interesting the horse neck? Because it's choking, choking the after uh, heavy uh, uh, after criteria of weight. It's a choking a uh, neck of uh, horse. Therefore, constructed a new innovation of the uh, neck is a uh, breast neck, a breast neck. Now, no breast horse, breast uh, uh, harness. Sorry, breast harness. Change the position of the power to the breast of animal. Therefore, the draw power, the draw power of horse increased with 40 percent, 40 percent. And other innovation was a horse shoe. You know, because the most dangerous part of the cattle and mainly the the horses is the uh, is the is the leg of the horse, therefore the horse shoe increased the stability of, uh, of uh, leg of horse. Neck harnessing, uh, but very interesting, even recently, I visited in Romania, in Moldova, uh, other side of the Carpathian mountain, uh, 20 years ago, and I saw uh, some uh, local peasant using a neck harnessing neck harness, because on the case of uh, uh, cattle and uh, buffalo and the bison, it's not dangerous. Be why? Because on the case of, uh, of uh, cattle, I hope, okay, on the case of uh, cattle and the buffalo, there are uh, legs, uh, 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 bones, uh, back bones, uh, neck bones. Therefore, a uh, neck harness not able to sliding back and choking the animal. And it's called attention, a very important peculiarity of the peasant uh, household and the peasant logic, if not necessary, introduce innovation, never innovate. Because a peasant, not a market oriented, a peasant household, not a market oriented construction. The peasant focuses to construct the survival, basic condition of the survival of family and the members of household, a little bit larger than the circle of the family. Therefore, in the horse necessary, introduce the innovation, the breast harnessing, even in the Middle Ages. But a uh, neck harnessing in the case of cattle until now use because it's work, it's work. Good. Uh, one of the most important uh, methods of history, the comparison. 
We can understand the peculiarity of the local evolution and how unfolded some construction of economy if we are able to compare with other economy, other construction, other civilization. If uh, uh, we are trying to find which cereals able to founding a large agrarian civilization, we can find three plants. The first one, a wheat, basically a Mediterranean and a European civilization founded on the wheat, wheat production. Rice, it's a typical cereal of Asian civilization. And finally, the mass of corn, there are, it's a British or American uh, name, a mass uh, which based the plant basis and the plant, uh, uh, plant foundation of Amerindian culture, basically the Aztec civilization. It's a border case, border situation, if we are trying to take uh, uh, a potato, for example, to this list. But potato, it's, uh, it's not, it's a little bit, uh, it's a compensatory uh, plant uh, beside the mass, beside the rice and beside the, uh, the wheat. Okay, uh, look at the criteria of uh, 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 comparison. The first, how many work necessary apply for the production? The second one, uh, which is the uh, productivity of the cereals. And finally, the effect to the soil. Look at the first a European civilization, a wheat. A wheat. For production of wheat, not necessarily so much work. Uh, only on the time of plowing in, and sowing, October, and uh, harvesting on the time of late June, July, and early August, necessary a heavy Verb. Therefore, a European peasant had a lot of free time. A lot of free time. Uh, at the beginning uh, lecture, I spoke about the proto-industrialization. Before the Industrial Revolution, used a lot of free time of local and regional peasantry. Okay, not so much. Uh, for example, if you read a fairy tale, you can develop some illusion that the peasant work very, very heavy, day by day. It's not true. It's not true. Look at, for example, the Christian calendar. In the Christian calendar, it had 127 fast. Fast. Official Christian fast. Uh, it's named in, on the historical anthropology. This is the day of unemployment. No work. There are a routine around the animals, routine on the garden, but no heavy work. I remember, because it's possible, I told to you, I uh, uh, more or less live the late phase of industrial, uh, of uh, traditional work in a rural area. And I remember, on my village, nobody hairy, never. Slowly, slowly, in the, in the very, very uh, well-constructed rhythm, live the life. On the time of heavy work, everybody necessary to work very much. But gen it not, it not, this is a normal situation. It's a very slow rhythm. Very slow rhythm. Uh, live the, the peasant uh, population. A lot of free time. But very moderate the productivity. One seed produces only four. Only four. The best thing we have that exceptional ten. But the norm it's a four. It's very critical. Why? Because necessary to take one seed to the following year for sowing. Necessary to pay the tax for king. The uh, uh, tax for landlords and tax for church. How able survive? How able survive? The solution of this problem, a common used area, a common used forest, a common used grazing land, and a common used water, lakes and the rivers and the streams. Common used with who? With landlords. With landlords. And on the common used forest, 
are edible mushrooms, edible fruits and uh, moderate hunting of wild animals, so and so, and uh, on the lake uh, there is a chance for the fishing, grazing land for animals, grazing. Therefore, the living standards depend on the size of common used land. Therefore, until the Industrial Revolution, living standards of Eastern peasant in Europe much higher. Much higher. Why? Because Eastern part of Europe, a uh, density of population, it's a moderate. Therefore, size of common used lands much larger. If we are approaching to the uh, high density of population in uh, uh, low country, uh, Germany, France, decrease the living standards of peasant. Why? Because no so large common use land. And as I mentioned before, uh, wheat exhaust two following years, not possible sowing to the same plot, same estate uh, wheat. Look at the rice. Uh, on the rice, there are two cultures. It's a dry rice and a, and a, and a wet rice culture. And uh, probably you know in the, for example, National Geography movie, there is a small lands, not small, large lands, for example, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the, from the plain show a very regulated structure of the, of the, of the estates and uh, the people working on the, on the mud and taking the rice plants uh, from 30 and 40 centimeters and uh, growing, growing, growing uh, and the consequence of heavy, a lot of heavy work and well constructed production of the rice, a very high productivity. Uh, one seed ever produce 30 to 50. Moreover, because these are a subtropical area, able to harvest some best uh, plant farming area two times. Therefore, the carrying capacity and the productivity of rice is very high. And because using a very sophisticated fertilizer, natural fertilizer uh, system, uh, save the arable land, the fertility for long time. Mass on the central part of America. Uh, necessary only 50 days, 50 days for uh, hoeing and, uh, and sowing, and basically it's enough. It's a hoe based uh, agriculture. Necessary only 50 days for whole of the year's production. Quite a moderate, quite a moderate. In the Amer Indian, Aztec, and Mochica, peasant had a lot of free times. But the productivity is very high. One seed produces the same grain like rice, and, but exhaust. These are the profile. It's very boring. It's a profile of the, of the wheat. But look, look at the civilization uh, consequences. Look at the first. If we are looking at the wheat culture, the wheat culture, wheat based culture, the first Im important consequence of, uh, of profile. Uh, plant farming and plant agriculture profile of the wheat, the proportion 80 to 20. What mean the 80 to 20? 80 to 20 mean in consequence of low productivity of wheat, the proportion of peasant never decrease under 80 percent level. Therefore, majority of European population peasant before industrial revolution. Some area, for example, low country, the Netherlands, the population uh, proportion, for, for example, urban population, even the late medieval age, reached the 50 percent. Why? Because organized the import of grain, import of cereals from Baltic area. But in civilization level, in the civilization account, 80 percent peasant and only 20 percent may, might be uh, for example, bourgeoisie, citizen, uh, nobleman, and intellectual, and the king, and any others, independent from uh, agrarian activity. Therefore, primary producer and only 20 percent, 20 percent who are independent. 
low density of population. Compare, for example, it's possible I told about this problem uh, former time, uh, for, uh, it's a uh, former lecture. Uh, look at the density of population in the Middle Ages, in Hungary. In Hungary, the highest density of population was 20 person, 20 person per square kilometer. And the highest one in low country, recently, the area of Belgium, uh, the Netherlands and the Luxembourg is uh, 50, 50 uh, uh, person per square kilometer. Look at, for example, Nanking. It's the southern capital of the uh, uh, Chinese Empire. 400 person per square kilometer. Look at Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan was the capital of Aztec Empire. 200 person per square, square kilometer. Therefore, Europe, low density international comparison, this is the advantage of, uh, of uh, comparative uh, method, uh, international compar uh, comparison, it's a very, very low density of population. Why? Because the wheat not able to produce higher level, which is the most important good consequence of uh, low density of population. High sensibility for technical innovation because not enough people for solving the problems. Look at, for example, the gunpowder invented in China. Look at, the, uh, uh, look at for example, uh, how the name is uh, using uh, navigation on the, on the sailing uh, is uh, compass, not compass, but the compass, uh, magnetic compass, because in the Vikings uh, developed a sun compass much more usable in the northern part of Atlantic, Atlantic uh, uh, Ocean. Why? Because the location of the magnetic pole of, uh, of globe is not on the arithmetical uh, position, a little, little bit, uh, uh, little bit uh, far from the, from, from, from the uh, arithmetical uh, pole. Therefore, in the modern time, using to the magnetic compacts a correction technology, co correction of calculation. Okay. But magnetic compass invented in China. But both of these innovations run the great uh, career in the European civilization. Why? Because in Europe never had enough men for solving the problem. Uh, using the firearms, early muskets, it's very dangerous, but no other option. No other option. And therefore, for example, Spain uh, was a very low density of population, invented huge amounts for, uh, uh, for develop and, uh, and uh, for developing uh, muskets. And finally, to the early modern time, the best soldier of the European battlefields were the Spaniards, the Spanish musketers. But the first generation is a blow up on the hand of the of the of the uh, uh, soldier, the early construction of the of the uh, firearms. High sensibility for technical innovation. One of the most important good consequence of low density of population. Very important the balanced nutrition, because the wheat exhausts the soil. Therefore, no chance necessary to using uh, animal husbandry beside the plant farming. No other option. Therefore, if we are using, the, uh, for example, uh, uh, underfeeding, uh, later we will analyze this situation. Underfeeding, there are two constructions. A quantitative underfeeding, not enough calorie. And the qualitative underfeeding, not enough fine element of the, of the feeding, trace element, uh, and, uh, and the nutrition, and the vitamins, and the, and the fine element of the, of the feeding. Uh, but in Europe, the people are quite balanced uh, 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 feeding and the balanced nutrition, uh, which is the reaction of the, of the body for the uh, underfeeding. Change the size of the body. Look at, for example, Hungarian history. Uh, the Hungarians who conquered the Carpathian Basin lived according to nomadic lifestyle. It's a mixed and balanced nutrition. Size of the soldier and the warriors, 170 centimeters. 
This is the recent average of the male on the Hungarian population. But, for example, on the 18th century, 18th century in the Hungarian history was a great blowing up of population, doubled during one century the population of Carpathian Basin. Therefore, majority of population lived on the condition of underfeeding. And a uh, recruited soldier and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, documentation of the of the, of the uh, recruited soldier survived and elaborated by a medical historian and reconstructed somebody know which data necessary to describe uh, uh, physical data about the human nobody two information the size of the body and the Hungarian soldier on the 18th century the average of the size of body 160 centimeter, 10 centimeter shorter compared with 20th century or the uh, 10th century. The second one, number of teeth. Why so important? Because the soldier meal, a dry meal, therefore without teeth, the people, the body, will weaker and weaker, not able to to digest, because the first phase of the digestion, the mouth and the chewing, of course. Okay, turn back to the story. Balanced nutrition, it's very important. Uh, and finally, this is the most critical information. Uh, it's a balancing between plant and animal farming. Carrying capacity of plant farming five times higher than the animal husbandry. Which is the consequences? On the Economic crisis increased the area of plant farming, but never able to occupy whole of potential uh, agrarian area because the wheat exhausts and therefore necessary to save uh, animals and the herd of animals for recovery of the potential arable land. Okay, look at the very short survey and unified, but very different the social consequences of nature of the rice and, uh, <coughs> and the mass, but summarized somehow, because we compare with the European and the wheat-based culture. The first one, high density of population. High density of pie, because both of these cereals, both of these plants, very, very successful. One seed able to produce 30 or 50 uh, seeds which is the uh, consequence of uh, high density of population. Low sensibility for technical innovation. Low sensibility for technical innovation. In Europe, the Spanish king and the uh, Spanish uh, soldier, generation by generation, try to improve the uh, technology of muskets. And became the world and Europe later in the world best soldier, the Spanish musketeers. In China, not necessary, because so high the population organized a crow army which able to win each of the most important military campaign against the potential, uh, 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 potential uh, invasion and the folks who organized invasion against the China. Therefore, low sensibility, all technology, enough for saving the empire. The second one, qualitative starvation. There is a, sorry for Chinese uh, student, but there is a uh, general simplification in European culture everywhere, because I lived in a different country, that the Asian people, it's simplified to China, Chinese, Asian people is a short. It's not true. It's not true. Look at, for example, a uh, uh, record book of Guinness. The tallest man, tallest human, a Chinese. But if we are looking generation by generation, living in underfeeding, the size of body became shorter and shorter, which happened, for example, in the Hungarian population. And if we are looking the modern society, generation by generation, Taller, taller, and taller. Look at, for example, me. I am not a, a basket, basketball player size, but in my village, when I try to walk inside of the buildings, 
which constructed in the 19th century, uh, I hurted my forehead on the doorway. Not because every carpenter uh, constructed this building, no. The population of 19th century is a shorter word. Therefore, the doorway is a shorter one. Qualitative starvation. A low importance of animal husbandry. Look at, for example, a Chinese restaurant. Which are the most important meats? Chicken, duck, pigs. Over. Over. Traditional. No. Why? Because on the large field of rice, no place for, for example, cattle, herds, or horses. When, for example, organize the cavalry in the Chinese army, the trader of empire travel out of the, uh, of the Great Wall and buy and bought horses from nomadic people and drove back and organized the cavalry, not inside of the country. Good. Okay, close the agrarian revolution, but the next step, if uh, uh, we are looking at the European trade, uh, look at which are the most important form of the trade. The first form of the trade, the local trade. The local trade. This construction of the trade exists even recently. If you walk, for example, the local market located to the marsh there, it's a square marsh, uh, it's a local trade. Which are the most important peculiarities of the local trade? And barking everyday goods to short distance. On the region of the, of the city, the trader and the producer travel to the market and try to sell for the local uh, people, the urban people. This is the local trade. Cheap Jack and the Hux Tree were the first generation of the, of the local trade and later organized the market at majority two days of the week, uh, Thursday and, and, uh, and Wednesday. Um, and Sunday, sorry, Thursday and the Sunday and Wednesday, it's different one on the weekend, one uh, during the weekend, uh, market. And finally, uh, two uh, special artisans founded uh, shops, basically the bakers and the butchers. Why? Because uh, the meat and the, and the, and the bre bread necessary to buy every day, not able to survive more days. Okay. The second form of the trade we will uh, try to analyze on the frame of forming, for forming a global economic system, the long distance trade. On that time had two great long distance, distance trade. The first one, a great silk road between China and Europe and northern part of Africa and Arabian Peninsula. This is the great silk road. Why so important? because uh, not only the silk was the products which exported or imported, but it's luxury goods, luxury goods. If some trader, for example, China, started travel to Rotterdam, it's a port of low country, uh, wrote testimony, wrote a testimony, because long distance trade is very dangerous very dangerous, uh, and, uh, but the rate of profit more hundred percent. If somebody go and back and turn back without any problem, became a rich man. It's a rich man. Because the profit of luxury trade very high, more hundred percent, but very dangerous very dangerous, because not only the trader specialized to the long-distance trade, but the, uh, the brigands too. And second important long-distance trade are uh, spice trade. For example, pepper, nutmeg, cinnamon, imported from Indian Ocean, island of Indian Ocean, to India, to China, to Muslim world and to Europe. On that time, on the Middle Ages, uh, 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 spice and the spices were luxury products. For example, the price one kilogram pepper was one kilogram gold. My question why? 
Some idea? Cheers. Okay. Only loudly, because I'm a test. Scarcity? Scarcity? Because it wasn't ah. that much of a supply. Scarcity? Scarcity. No, because almost the same the scarcity was a pepper, a cinnamon, and a nutmeg. Uh, the quantity on the market and the uh, uh, cost of production, almost the same. The solution not so easy. Solution not so easy. Uh, for example, in my faculty, there is a special uh, education, it's a stylist, you know, a stylist. And uh, on the stylist education, there is a, uh, a, a special branch of the stylist education, the making of perfume, making of perfume. It's very far, but we will arrive to the high price of the pepper. Uh, uh, my question, it's a general bottle of perfume, it's a 100 euros. It's a general price, average price. My question, which is the cost of making of perfume? One bottle of perfume. Free offer, I ask. 100, this is the price on the, for example, Douglas shop. Five. Five, five euro. Other offer. You are the winner. Five or less. Why we are paying 100 euros? For illusion. Illusion of luxury consumption. For example, there is a, a for example, perfume nail. It's a Brad Pitt. I buy the perfume, pushing the button, and I imagine I'm a bad, Brad Pitt. But not true, but illusion. And illusion, the price of illusion is very high. And uh, somehow the pepper, not rational, a little bit same situation. Majority of audience came from the uh, faculty of economics. Uh, you know the movie of, uh, uh, of uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Therefore, on the stock of exchange, much more function according to psychology than the real economic processes. A psychology. Therefore, a high price of uh, pepper much more reason of psychology than the economic reason. When a uh, next wave of geographical discoveries appear on the 16th and 17th century and appear a new colonial products, tea, tobacco, Café and chocolate. And the price of pepper down, and the tobacco, chocolate, and tea, it's replaced the position of pepper. Therefore, a uh, general sense, the reason of this price, more or less, based on psychological reason. But on the time, the pepper, one kilogram pepper, was one kilogram gold. Basically, psychological reason. Cinnamon and the nutmeg much larger. But the contemporaries, nobody discuss why. Everybody agree, and when agree, everybody the same price and able to, to, to pay its function, its work. Okay, long distance trade, uh, precious commodity, long distance, very, very high uh, uh, profit and benefit. Uh, the, f f the third form of the trade, inter-regional trade. The first inter-regional trade unfolded between low country, as I mentioned, Belgium uh, and uh, Netherlands and Luxembourg, and uh, Baltic area. Inter-regional trade based to maritime trade, because in Europe, or not only Europe, in everywhere, before appearance of railway network. No chance for bulky trade in continental area. Not by chance, the highest population concentrated on the traditional time, on the riverside, lakeside, or, uh, or, or uh, seaside area. Each of important, for example, seas, uh, riverside uh, is Paris, 
uh, a lakeside uh, Stockholm or, or, or London was a typical partly riverside and partly seaside country. And in this area between low country and between Baltic area organized a Baltic trade from the developed area, low country exported textile, very important to mention before industrial revolution, according to industrial productivity, 80% a textile industry, any other only 20%. But in consequence of the Industrial Revolution changed back, but why so important the textile? Because it was 80% of, uh, of uh, industrial output. Backward arrived cereals and timber, wooden material. The timber played the same function like recently the fossil fuels, the oil, for example. Why? Because in traditional time, uh, timber was a universal material used for construction of ships, construction of buildings, construction of, uh, uh, of uh, bridges, and, and for, for heating. heating. Everything. If somebody had uh, uh, a timber background, a huge forest, able organize and dominate the global trade. Because not only, not only the timber material necessary for uh, construction of uh, ships, for shipbuilding, but necessary a tar, a tar, T-A-R. Somebody know which is the tar? It's a, for Hungarian student, uh, because uh, on other, other uh, Chinese version, I don't know, uh, for a Hungarian student, Raise the hand. The uh, uh, It's a make from uh, uh, make from uh, pine uh, and uh, and uh, drawing and uh, and uh, uh, cutting to small pieces are uh, pines and uh, mixed uh, some uh, uh, some uh, uh, some different uh, uh, different uh, um, uh, how the name is. Uh, it's a. Uh, uh, it's a different form of the rocks and heating, heating, heating and cooking and finally became a very flexible material. And before the modern artificial material, only the tar was able to insulate the surface of the ships and the roof of the buildings. Insulation. It's a you know which, what means the insulation. It's covering and, uh, and closing down the body of ships against the salt water. And for example, one year generally hew down one million pine on Baltic area for making tar. If somebody uh, visit in Finnish, classical Finnish sauna, it's covering with tar, and there is a very special smell. Recently using for the asphalted surface, making a tar, but not a classical organic tile, tar, but uh, 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 it's made from oil, as every city. Therefore, before Industrial Revolution, the power, the state who was able to control the large forest of Baltic area, controlled the global ocean too. Okay, later I will return to this problem. Good, uh, but how can this uh, distribute the products on the frame of different uh, uh, trade construction? The first a market, you know, it's very easy construction. You visit a market, would like to buy a cheese or, for example, a chicken or or vegetables. It's market. The second one a redistribution. Redistribution. It's very important. The modern state funding to redistribution. It's redistribute via taxes and the fees are uh, not surplus, but uh, the production of, uh, of national income. And there are uh, reciprocal forms. Somebody know which are the reciprocal forms? Reciprocal forms, for example, in the Hungarian tradition, 
uh, Hungarian tradition named uh, Kalaka. It's possible you know. For example, very simple situation. There is a uh, young couple, not enough money for making a building, but only buying a raw material, cement, bricks, and, and others. Therefore, calling the friends and the relatives help to uh, young couple and construct the building. There is a helping bank function. But why different from the uh, market? Because on the market necessary to pay back for the, for the service. But in the reciprocal form, not necessary. If somebody never would like to call back the help, it's not for. This is a reciprocal. It's very old style, but uh, if uh, we, we would like to destroy the, uh, the, 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 the circulation of products and the service, the reciprocal forms uh, we have to mention. Okay. Market redistribution, there is a different rate of the taxes. Uh, the highest one is uh, Sweden, for example, and the Scandinavian country, some Hungary, some, somewhere in the middle with the scale. Reciprocal forms, uh, as I mentioned, generally it's an old uh, peripheral construction. Okay. Good. Okay, we arrived to Europe at the dawn of formation of European economic system. Uh, this is the 9th century. On the 9th century, if you try to imagine Europe, on the 9th century, a giant forest, a giant forest, on Europe, no lower limit of the forest. Without humans, for example, if might happen a nuclear war and disappear the human, uh, any form of the humans from the continent, uh, step by step, recovering a forest area before a European civilization cover almost whole of the continent a huge forest. This is the dark age, a dark age for a lot of reasons. It's a great decline of civilization after the Roman Empire and, uh, and the dark age because no information what happened on the century. Therefore, on the, only archaeologists and the, and the uh, natural sciences able to construct information about this period. But in the 11th century started the recovery of, uh, of uh, European civilization, and I call your attention, there are two urban areas. Two urban areas. For example, in northern low country area and northern Italy. Why interesting? It's possible in the introductory lecture I told to you recently, if we are looking a night satellite picture about Europe, who are the highest concentration of light, northern part of coastal area of the northern sea and the northern Italy. It's very interesting. It's expired one millennia and the same structure survived. Two poles, two urban poles, not only recently but even in the 11th century located to two poles of Europe. Okay, uh, look at the first uh, southern area. So, oh, sorry, sorry. A southern area. This is the Mediterranean Sea. On the Mediterranean Sea, after the collapse of Western Roman Empire, had three powers: a uh, Byzantine Empire. It's focused to Constantinople. A uh, Muslim civilization on that time focused to uh, Baghdad, it's a Baghdad Caliphate's epoch, and a small Italian cities. If we look at the chance of this rivalry, the, most, in, the highest one, uh, highest uh, uh, proportion for the success Byzantine uh, or the Muslim civilization. But finally, the winner of Mediterranean, trade of Mediterranean Sea were are uh, Italian cities. Why? Because both Muslim Empire and Byzantine Empire are continental empire. Majority of income came from taxes and fees and very tiny proportion from trade. But the Italian cities, whole of the income, based on trade. 
Therefore, a Byzantine leader of Byzantine and Muslim uh, Empire not interested so much for the trade, even the maritime trade. But the Italian cities, all of the power focused to the maritime trade. Uh, which are the most important products, as I mentioned, a luxury trade, a uh, distributed trade, oriental spice, pepper, nutmeg, ginger, cinnamon, and the crocus. The first city uh, which focuses to the international trade, Amalfi, located a little bit southward from uh, Nepal, uh, and later Pisa, Genoa, and Venice, the free triad of uh, rivalry. Uh, it's only distributor trade, which is the trajectory of the distributor trade. A Muslim trader bought the spices on Ceylon, on a small spice island of, of Indian Ocean, and transported via Red Sea to, um, which is the uh, city on the delta of uh, Nile, uh, very famous uh, library are. Alexandria, sorry, a little bit late, therefore the, word, the words don't come easy. Alexandria, Alexandria was the most important port of distribution of trade. And uh, an Italian trader from Pisa, Genoa and Venice imported the spice to this city-state and distributed everywhere in Europe. Therefore, it's no production only distribution. The most important economic profile of the southern pole of European economy, medieval economy, a distribution. A distribution of uh, oriental luxury products. Uh, very, uh, very strange the trajectory of the state development of the uh, Mediterranean country. Why? Because in the continental area, if we are looking how large which were the lodging of nobility, peasantry, or serfdoms, or, 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 or nobility and peasantry and citizenry. Okay. The bourgeoisie lived in cities. The noblemen lived in the castle and the forts. And the peasants lived in villages. Therefore, the social status is separated and divided according to quality of uh, settlement. Situation in Italy is basically different. Why? Because a Italian people, Italian inhabitants, lived in the Roman heritage. Well-constructed highways, well-constructed canals, well-channels, uh, well-constructed buildings. Therefore, in Italy, not only the bourgeoisie lived in the cities, but the nobility too. Look at, for example, the play of uh, Romeo and Juliet. Two noble families living in Verona, a Montagu and Capulet. And their behavior, like a nobleman, kill each other. But in the continental area, the same behavior unfolded in the battlefields. In Italy, on the street, of the, of, the, of the cities. But advantage of presence of nobility in the cities, that huge capital, huge fortune of the nobleman flowing in, into trade. Therefore, in the continental area, the nobleman almost never participated in the trade. In Italy, everywhere. Therefore, the economic development, economic dynamic, dynamism, much higher compared to any other region of Europe. And uh, around the cities uh, develop a, uh, uh, how the name is, uh, a contado. This is an Italian word. It's a territory around the city. In continental area, there is a city without region. Why? Because inside of the city living a bourgeoisie, but the estates around the city is under ownership of landlords. Not by chance, it's a classical German term from the Middle Ages that the wall separates the Buja from the Pisa. Therefore, inside of the city wall, living a 
citizen society out a feudal society. Therefore, the wall is the line of the separation. In Italy, no. In Italy, the territory around a city under ownership of noblemen who living inside of the city connect closely to the everyday city life. Okay, it's a contado, city-state development. Uh, it's a very good example if somebody visiting in the uh, central part of Italy, a San Gimignano. A San Gimignano. Uh, it's a typical, a good example how related to each other a noble family. This is the city hall of uh, San Gimignano. And this is the buildings of noble family living inside of the San Gimignano. Therefore, it's afraid from each other, not the enemies of the city. Therefore, constructed a tower-like uh, construction against to each other, like the story of Roman and Juliet. Roman and Juliet. It's the, um, how the name is, uh, um, uh, um, aggression and uh, cruelty and uh, any form of the of the fight located inside of the city, not between and not on the uh, battlefield. Good. Uh, this is the network of the Levan trade. As I mentioned, uh, this is Alexandria. Here is the port of Alexandria. Uh, travel to. Adriatic Sea, travel to Tyrian Sea, and distribute everywhere in Europe. Uh, this is the Spice Trade. A uh, red line is a uh, silk road, and the uh, blue one are uh, Spice Trade roads. Uh, look at the Northern Post. This is the Southern Post, distributor trade. Look at uh, Low Country, Belgium, Luxembourg, and uh, Netherlands. Basically, this is a part of Habsburg Empire. It's one of the greatest uh, dynasty of European history. Uh, the second one, uh, somebody visited in uh, the Netherlands. Okay, not so much. It's artificial country, artificial country, because 20% under the sea level. Therefore, if somebody walking on the, on the rural area, uh, the channels uh, and the streams it's, uh, it's uh, flowing much higher than the walking. It's unbelievable. Much higher flowing uh, less than the, the, the pavement at the walk side. Uh, and you know, for example, the most important fingerprints of the Netherlands landscape are, are uh, windmills, a windmills, a windmills, which is the function of the windmills. Not uh, it's uh, uh, grinding uh, cereals because no uh, real cereal production. It's uh, mobilized a water pump. It's pushing up, pushing up a water. Uh, it's uh, uh, constructed step by step higher uh, channels and uh, transported back the water from the continental area back to the sea, to the northern sea. Organized the water regulation since the 10th century, therefore, uh, Dutch people had a great practice on that. Uh, very bad agrarian area, therefore, uh, uh, introduced a industrialized agriculture. Making a cheese, making, for example, a, a painting grasses. You know the pasta. Pasta. This is a very special uh, uh, color of the, of the painting. A pasta, it's a grass. And uh, uh, pasta painting, it's made from the grass. Therefore, very high added values are the production in this area. Why? Because no easy solution. No classical wheat field production, therefore necessary to invent some innovation. For example, making grass, uh, from grass uh, paintings, uh, making, for example, from milk a cheese, it's a large cheese, it was a traditional tins, because a large cheese was able to uh, save the acceptable edible quality for seven days, seven 
days, seven years, seven years. This was the longest uh, uh, one uh, conservation in the traditional condition. But the most important production of this area was the textile industry, textile industry. Something about the agriculture and the tulips. Somebody know which is the homeland of tulip? No? no? Imported to Netherlands. And the breeding of tulips is Netherlands. And very high value. If somebody visits in the market everywhere in the, uh, uh, in the Dutch uh, uh, cities, in that, uh, uh, the Netherlands, half of Hungary. But very interesting, the size of the country is a little bit more than 40,000 uh, square kilometers. Population is, uh, I remember, 60 million, a little bit larger, uh, higher than Hungary. But nobody uh, thinking about the uh, Netherlands is a small country. Because the creativity and the productivity unbelievable high since 1,000 years. But my question, which is the homeland of Tulip? Asia. Asia. Asia, but Asia is a very large country. The largest one, a little bit closer. You know the mountain of Tian Shan, Tian Shan in Central Asia. But in Central Asia, in natural condition, only one type of the tulip are the red one. Any other consequence of breeding. But if somebody able to breed a dark tulip, it's so high price are that no problem all of the life. Very high added value. Not only production, simple product, added value, added value. It's area of innovation. And the, I spoke about the cheese here. Okay, not expire uh, the material, only start the next one. I ask you patience for some minutes, some seconds. Okay, uh, these are the most important products of, uh, of uh, uh, Dutch economy uh, with high added value. And uh, look at the other one, what about I spoke about uh, uh, some slide before, a Baltic coast, a Baltic coastal area, uh, timber. As I mentioned, why so important the timber? Because this is the universal products of the traditional time. For, every, uh, for almost every human activity, need a using of, of timber. The second one, a tar. This is the tar. It's a material of insulation which made from timber, a different part of the type. Pines, sorry. Fur for clothing. And the grain, grain, not from the Baltic area, not from the Baltic area. Somebody visited in the Baltic coastal area? Baltic area? Nobody? No? 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 Even St. Petersburg? No? No, nah, it's part of coastal area. It's a typical. It's a very cold area. Very cold area. Uh, I, for example, during my university studies, because I'm part of geographer, therefore I, I traveled a lot, which was possible. And I worked in uh, Mason for... It was a, 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 a vacancy uh, factory work. Uh, and uh, during the weekend, I traveled in different parts of Germany. And unfortunately, all the time, I, uh, I, I didn't know any word in German. Therefore, my strategy was uh, that I walked to the uh, office of, uh, of railway station and I repeated the target uh, station, name of the target station. From the rest, then it's no problem because I told to the employees I would like to, go to travel uh, uh, Berlin, its capital of uh, on the time Eastern uh, Germany, but when I arrived to the Berlin, it was a, a hardest dictatorship, whole of the Eastern countries, 
Uh, when I arrived to the Berlin, I repeated, I would like to travel to island of Rügen. Rügen. Somebody know? Uh, Rügen, island of Rügen form the same material like the rocks of Dover in British Isle. It's charcoal, a huge white island, charcoal. Everybody know which is the charcoal? Charcoal. Miskö for Hungarian students. It's a white rock, white stone. And for geography, it's interesting. And I repeated, I would like, Rügen, Rügen. And the employee didn't understand. Finally, I received one ticket. I walked to the uh, uh, wagon and arrived the controller. Ask me my ticket. I showed to him, Rügen, I repeated, Rügen. Laugh at me. And uh, some hours later arrived other controller, asked me the ticket, I showed to him Rügen, I repeated Rügen. And finally I understood, I traveled on the last 200 kilometers with one tram ticket. Tram ticket. Because in the Berlin officer, because didn't understood my words, imagine I would like to travel somewhere in Berlin. And very interesting, importance of personal connection, even in the hardest dictators, dictatorship of Eastern countries, I met with two benevolent people. And I traveled with tram ticket, 200 kilometer without any bothering. Okay, turn back to the story. Great, but the Baltic area, Baltic coastal area, no chance for production, no chance for production. I remember when I was a student, I lived together with Eastern German guys who came from the Baltic area. And even on May, swim in the Tisza River. May. The temperature was a little bit more than uh, 15 or, or, or 16 Celsius degree. But for them, who lived in the Baltic coastal area, it was the swimming water. Okay, turn back. Uh, grain came from, not from the Baltic area because a cold area, but behind the Baltic area, behind the Baltic area, there are two rivers. The first river, the Vistula, other one, Odera. And the Polish area exported huge quantity of grain, which from uh, river ships transported to uh, maritime trade and the uh, great vessels and exported to low country. Therefore, interconnected. Industrial products exported to Baltic area and uh, backward are raw materials. Honey, because before the uh, great colonial imports, uh, no other sweeting material, only the honey. Okay, this is the north. This is the northern pole of European, medieval European economy. Low countries, dry goods, it's mean uh, uh, different metal, knives and, and axes, and uh, soft goods and the salt, and backward, organized as small cities, the trade uh, from the Baltic Sea, a Hanseatic League. A Hanseatic League. Uh, somebody listened about the Hanseatic League? Hanseatic League is formed a large community of small cities. Like, for example, this is the saving strategy of the small ships inside of the uh, ocean, forming a large leagues. Uh, more than 100 small cities. Population no more than one or two hundred. The leading city, uh, it was uh, Lübeck. You can see the, oh, sorry. You can see the Lübeck over there. Uh, and exported timber, tar, grain, fur, and honey. Not by chance, in Italy, never formed a, a leagues between the cities. Why? Because these, the member of Hanseatic League, no highest population, one, two thousand. Look at the population of Venice, 150,000. Look at the population of Genoa, almost 100,000. Therefore, the large, strong Italian cities 
not necessarily forming any kind of alliance. But the small cities, much better, much more efficient. Good. And between the two poles, two poles, a northern poles, industrial poles of medieval economy, and distributor poles, uh, northern Italian cities, organized a meeting place between uh, two economic poles of medieval cities. Its name, Fairs of Champagne and the Brie. It's located over there. Located over there. Between the northern poles and between the southern economic poles. Why? Because necessarily change the products. And why selected Champagne and Brie, two regions? Because on that time, Champagne and Brie wasn't a part of France. It's an independent uh, principality. Independent principality. And the trader and the businessman never liked the strong political power. Therefore, every time in the past, in the recent time and in the future, find the weak political area. And the count of Champagne it's very poor and very moderate military power had. Ideal place for trader. Because paid for the using of area, but no any danger that the strong political leader it's, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, disturb the peace of economic and trading activities. Organized, somebody participated in a festival yet, for example, music festival. No, nobody never. For example, Ireland, very famous in Hungary for the foreign student, I suggest, uh, during, uh, at the beginning of, uh, of August, start our island. There is a, on the uh, island of, uh, of uh, Danube, uh, a little bit expensive because it's focused to the uh, visitor uh, from Western uh, Europe, but it's very interesting. I visited uh, a lot of times, uh, and uh, if somebody participates at a, a festival, visiting the toilet, on the last day, not so easy field trip, because the quality of environment is uh, a little bit using over. Therefore, follow the same logic when organized the first of the Champagne League. Organized because one year there are 12 months. Organized six, six fairs in different areas. Why? Because when one city overused, move to other and clean. When overused, clean to other. Therefore, it was a rotation system. Quite a limited circle, geographical circle, had a fair continuously, year by year by year. And if everybody would like to buy information, service, or products, travel to Champagne. Because whole of the Trading Society of Europe focuses to Shanghai. The first one, January, the first fair. Fair is a, like a market, but it's organized much longer time. Uh, Let me see man. The second one, which started March, Barcelona. Uh, the third one, May, province. This was the first trade in province. The second one, uh, June, in Troy. This was a show. It's a warm uh, trade, warm fair. September province, this was the second province. Uh, October Troy, this was the uh, cold Troy, it's a French term. And uh, okay, six one, okay, over. And which are the peculiarity of the Champagne Brie, first of the Champagne Brie? Uh, the first one, or organized, organized, sorry, organized a uh, agent's network. Because before appearance of this uh, organization of Champagne uh, and Brie's first on the trade, trading system, uh, the head of the agent, head of the merchant houses personally traveled one to other area. It's very dangerous because if somebody killed not only the, uh, for example, fortune and the money lost, but the information on the brain, information on the, on the brain, because this generation only very minimal quantity of information draw uh, on the paper. It's other generation. For example, I remember in my village, the majority of people never wrote down uh, information, but the brain, 
and the function of the brain, its very high quantity of memories and information was able to use and activate. Uh, organized a network of agency, therefore the head of merchant houses not necessary travel personally. Agency network organized and, and, and uh, mobilized the uh, information service and the products. The second innovation, bill of exchange, introduced the artificial money, artificial money. And very important innovation, not recently, because recently we opened the uh, account uh, on the electronic account uh, of the bank, generally not necessarily using the notes, not necessarily using money directly. Only electronic information, card, phone or uh, smart uh, watches using. But the artificial money appeared in the 13th century, brought to one people its value 100 gold ducats. And everybody accepted. Everybody accepted. Uh, therefore, in consequence of artificial uh, money, 10 to 17 fold more products mobilized on the European trade uh, uh, than uh, quantity of real coins are from gold, silver or copper, which is the background of the artificial money. A confidence, confidence to each other. If the confidence is down, the rate of artificial money decreased. But beside the uh, motivation for collaboration, as I mentioned a little bit before, beside this was the other important peculiarity of European ev uh, civil evolution, uh, social evolution, a confidence to each other. Confidence to each other. Uh, it's possible, you know, the uh, experiment which performed, and this is the last slide today, uh, performed some years ago. Uh, uh, made when the artificial intelligence uh, became usable 10 years ago, uh, 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 organized a psychological experiment. Make a different avatar, a profile. For example, a selfish and, and, uh, uh, and a benevolent and, uh, and aggressive, and different avatar make and, and play in the uh, artificial, uh, artificial space. And who are the winners? who offer the confidence for everybody, but only once. If somebody tries to manipulate, able to learn from the manipulation and, the, uh, and, and rejected the confidence. Therefore, the confidence, uh, confidence is uh, it's, uh, one of the most important semen of the, of the European uh, interaction of the European society and without confidence, and minimizing of the confidence uh, destroy uh, the most important values and, uh, and uh, uh, results of European civilization. Therefore, the bill of exchange based to the confidence among uh, uh, participants of European trade. Okay, we will continue in two weeks' time and thanks a lot uh, for your attention and I ask uh,